Hey, welcome back everybody. Uh, I'm still waiting for the crankshaft to come back from the machine shop. So in the meantime, I've gotten into the governor system on X231. As I said in one of the earlier videos, it's a centrifugal ball unit, mounts to the front of the crankshaft in this opening right here. And it's pretty simple in how it works. As engine RPM increases, centrifugal force acts upon the steel balls, pulling them out against the tapered portion of this inner race, which causes the entire back half of the cartridge to drift to the rear at which point the shouldered portion of this thrust bearing race acts upon the governor fork and when the governor fork moves it also manipulates the external lever just like happens on a production 445 tractor. So back to the bench I've already been through the entire governor cartridge uh, I had it all apart cleaned it up and really didn't find anything at all wrong inside this at all it looks like it's been replaced at one point and I believe I know the reason why. When I cleaned out the engine crankcase, I found what looks like pieces of a failed bearing. And the only thing I can find that they even resemble is the thrust bearing that's on the back side of this governor cartridge. So perhaps that is the reason why this unit is in such good condition compared to its surrounding parts. But really no drama here, so I'm not going to waste any more time on it. I am, however, going to do some work to X231's governor fork and shaft to correct some wear that's on both of those pieces. But first, I want to compare them to the 10A production uh, equivalents that come out of a 445. Dimensionally, everything's the same, just a few minor differences in their construction. The one being X231's governor fork is retained to the shaft by this roll pin that's driven right in that bore there, whereas the production version just utilizes a single tapered point set screw to accomplish that task. Also the production 445 external lever looks like it has the shaft actually staked into it and X231's lever has just been hand brazed on so uh, the prototype parts definitely have some kind of shop built attributes to them but I'm going to start by working on the governor fork itself. It's got a couple pretty good flat spots worn into it where that rear thrust bearing race contacted it. So I think what I'm going to do is just get this cleaned up, build each of these areas up with a little bit of weld, and then carefully return them to their original rounded profile without changing things too much. And just like that, it's done. Before I did anything, I did trace out the profiles of the unworn areas so that I would have a, a guide to go by in order to get everything back to the way it was after I built it up. But it really wasn't a whole lot of work. Um, it seems to have turned out just fine. I'm happy with the fact that it will pivot smoothly on the thrust bearing race again, and it won't have that step to overcome that it would have had with the old flat spots in it. So uh, it wasn't a whole lot of work, but I think it's well worth it in the advantages that I could gain by having a, a, a smoother operating governor. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So the last bit of work to do on the governor system is going to be reconditioning this shaft. X231 used two thin Torrington bearings installed in the block for this shaft to pivot on. And you can see where the bearings really wore into the surface of the shaft in a bad way. Contrast that with the production 445 and they used bushings for the shaft to pivot on. Obviously the bushings still cause some wear, but whether it be for cost savings or they just thought it was a better way to go, they went with bushings in the production series over these bearings. Since X231 is a prototype and this was kind of their first stab at this style governor, I'm going to keep it just the way it is. I have two new bearings on order and they're a couple days out. So in the meantime, I'm just going to concentrate on uh, renewing this shaft here, getting that back up to spec. And I believe the easiest way to accomplish that is just going to be replacing this shaft entirely. It looks like it'll be fairly easy to do. It appears that it's only brazed onto the lever, so I believe these two pieces will come apart without a lot of trouble. I've already got a new shaft started. I have the fork end completed already. I just need to finish out the lever end, but to do that, I'm going to have to get the lever off of the old shaft to figure out what kind of end profile there is on here so that I can replicate it with the new one. And that is where this piece comes into play. It's a crude fixture I built around the old lever and shaft in order to retain the alignment between the shaft and the lever for when I go to put the new one in. The way it's going to work is the new shaft will have a roll pin driven in it just like I have the pin in the old one right here 
and that roll pin will be driven into this small hole down here at the bottom which should pretty well locate the shaft up against this small piece of angle iron down here. Once that's tight, the lever will be held in between these pieces of angle iron by a quarter inch by 20 bolt that's going to go through this uh, secondary smaller hole in the lever and thread into the back of the guide right here. So with both pieces held firmly to the fixture, I should be able to get the new shaft brazed on to the original lever and still have both pieces retaining the same position in relation to one another that I have right here. So here we are the following day. I got the old shaft out of the lever, got all the dimensions I needed to finish replicating it with the new one. The lever is tight in the fixture and I'm happy with how the new shaft fits and lines up. Once I get it pinned in and everything secured, the last thing to do will be to join these two pieces together. So this is how it turned out. The fixture held both pieces in alignment well, and I'm not going to bother with dressing up or flattening out this brace joint at all. The other one was left rough, so I'm just going to leave this one rough as well. And I kind of like the shop built appearance that the other one had, so that's how I'm going to uh, leave this one too. And as a bonus, the shaft bearing showed up today. They are direct replacements of the old ones, so they should perform nicely. Last thing I need to do here is grab some tools. I got the bearings. We're going to head over to the engine block and see if we can wrap this thing up. Okay, guys, I have the first bearing ready to go in. It had some heavy-duty form of Cosmoline on it or something. It must be some real good new old stock stuff because <laughs> it was so gummed up I couldn't even make the, the little needle bearings turn on the inside, so I got all that cleaned out. And... Uh, Getting ready to just put the outer one in here. This one's going to be driven in from the outside of the block and then the, the inner one I'll just flip the block over and drive that one in from inside the crankcase. That'll be the easiest way to do it. So, see if we can make it happen. Just trying to make sure it starts in straight. It's looking pretty good. About flush with it right now. I'm gonna tap it in a little further. Recess it in a little bit. There's a tiny little oil seal that goes on the outside of the bearing here, so I need to get it down in the block a little ways. A little more. Okay, pretty happy with that. Just gotta get the other one done. We'll test the lever. Just to do a final check on everything, I loosely assembled the pieces in the block and they really pivot nice. Uh, everything's nice and smooth, yet there is really no play, no slack in anything, so I'm happy about that. Much like the oil pump from the last video, I am gonna have to just remove these again and probably get them put in a box and put up on a shelf. I'm still waiting to get the crankshaft back from the machine shop, so until I can get the crankshaft put in, all these pieces have to stay out of the way. So that about does it for the governor system. If I don't get any parts back from the machine shop, I'll just keep on reconditioning the pieces I still have here. There's plenty of that left to do, so I should have no trouble keeping busy. Um, guys, I thank you for your time. I know this video got to be a little long, but as always, I thank you for watching, and uh, I hope to see you back here next time.